fiscal, what are the, some of the fiscal and or particularly the economic implications? If you could just go there. Talk about the EPO's baseline is important to understanding our nation's current economic and fiscal state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing today. And thank you to Director Swagel for being here to uh, testify on CBO's baseline projections. As we've previously discussed, the CBO plays a critical and vital role in providing Congress with objective and nonpartisan data to help us as legislators make the most informed decisions possible. CBO's baseline is important to understanding our nation's current economic and fiscal state, as well as helping this committee uh, put together our annual budget resolution. This year's baseline does show some concerning figures about the fiscal state of our nation. Our nation currently sits at $34.2 trillion of debt, or 122% of GDP. And over the next decade, the CBO projects this figure to grow to $54.4 trillion, or 130% of our GDP. Additionally, this year's baseline shows multiple government trust funds going insolvent over the next decade. For example, the CBO projects that the Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund, which funds the majority of Social Security, will, be, will become insolvent by 2033, which would result in an automatic 25% cut for Social Security recipients. Let me state that again. If we do nothing, we will have an automatic 25% cut for Social Security recipients. You also project that the Highway Trust Fund will be exhausted by 2028. And these figures are very deeply concerning to me. While we cannot allow our debt and deficit to continue on this unsustainable and irresponsible path, we in the House must do something about it. So my question, uh, first question for you would be, it's something that I'm very deeply concerned about is the rising cost of our national debt. Your report projects our annual interest payments to rise to $870 billion in 2024, which is a $211 billion increase from last year. How do our rising interest payments impact our long-term debt trajectory? Director Swigel. Oh, that these net interest payments, in some sense, are going to overwhelm all the, the you know, other possible uses of our budget, right? We have the mandatory spending that continues on autopilot, and then discretionary spending is as we'll get overwhelmed and, or crowded out by the rising interest payments. And so are there fiscal, what are the, some of the fiscal and or particularly the economic implications? If you could just go there. Talk about the economic implications tied to our growing interest payments. Right. And that, that's, to me, that's, that's the real long-term concern is that the rising interest payments, the rising deficits and debt will feed back into yet higher interest rates and have other negative economic consequences, lower investment, lower job creation, lower growth, <coughs> excuse me, less ability for us to this is face up to our economic and other challenges. You know, in, in, in this, to that point, in this house, and you know, obviously we, we need to restore fiscal responsibility. We talk a lot and almost exclusively in the house about the need to cut discretionary spending. In, in your estimates, I mean, the, the, the numbers are, are very plain and very simple. Can we rein in our debt and deficit with only changes to discretionary spending? No, it's just not possible. Eventually we have to look at other things. Other things being? You know, either mandatory spending or revenues. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how does the CBO baseline account for the potential impact of regulatory policies? Um, we do in part. So we, we do our best to look at the regulatory policies that have been, you know, and en 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 enacted, um, incorporated or, you know, put in place by the administration or proposed and look at what's the economic impact and the fiscal impact we're not able to detail each and every regulation, but we get some of the major ones. And can you talk about how the, the regulatory costs under this administration, under the Biden administration, how it compares to the last administration? Has it increased, the, has the Biden administration's regulatory uh, actions that they've taken increased or decreased the fiscal outlook, or I should say maybe the, mm -hmm. the total projected debt over the next decade? Uh, you know, it's a good question. It's a really good question. I can't compare against the last administration. I just, I just don't have that off, off the top of my head. I, I'm not sure we've even done that. 
but some of the major regulations show up in our budgetary projections and the, the EPA and, and student loans and others. And then briefly, uh, last spring, we passed the Fiscal Responsibility Act or the FRA, which imposed caps on discretionary spending for fiscal years 24 and 25. How did those spending caps uh, impact our overall uh, federal deficit, projected deficit over the next 10 years? Yeah, so those caps and then the, the CRs that put them in, in, into practice were the largest uh, impact in reducing our deficit trajectory. And that, in, in total, that was about $2.6 trillion over 10 years. Got it. Th thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back. To $54.4 trillion, or 130% of our GDP. CEO plays a critical and vital role in providing Congress with objective and nonpartisan statements to rise to $870 billion in 2024, which is a slide does show some concerning figures about the fiscal state of our nation. Our nation... You also project that the Highway Trust Fund will be exhausted by 2028. 